So in verse 15, the sword coming out of his mouth is the word of God. So this is why we concentrate so heavily on the word of God. Because that was what was coming out of Jesus' mouth. He used God's word to destroy the enemy. And he showed us examples. Everything he said, everything he did on this earth was God's word coming out of his mouth. So our victory will depend whether or not God's word is coming out of our mouth or the devil's lies are going to be coming out of our mouth. And so if the devil's lies are coming out of our mouth, guess what? We are actually hurting other people and potentially killing them with our words. So we have to really see ourselves as Jesus and God's word coming out of it. The sword is the word of God, and that should be, I'm practicing, and I'm far away from that, is to constantly to remember to speak God's truth. And I fail in that a lot. I'll admit it, I'll be honest. I fail in that a lot. But my goal is I'm learning how to see myself as Jesus and his sword and his word. I want to get to a point where I'm just speaking his word all the time. And guess what? When he spoke his word, it destroyed the works of the devil every single time. And so our victory will depend on what's coming out of our mouth. Is it a bunch of lies of the devil? Or is it God's word? And so Jesus, like this picture, like in Revelation, is so powerful. So that picture that John saw him is the victorious Jesus, the king, on a white horse victorious, eyes like fire, sword coming out, his name on record. That is the definition of king. And the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. And so we have to start seeing ourselves exactly the same way and start living that out. This is an awesome picture. Like when I read this, I just allow the Holy Spirit just to take my imaginations and just start visualizing it like what it means. Because we have to make, take this word and its life and we have to, it has to become part of us. Renewing our mind is allowing this word to come in and penetrate us all the way through, through our whole being. And what happens is if you start imagining that, so for example, when I think that I want to be as Jesus, I already am, but I'm saying renewing my mind to start becoming like him. In the spirit realm, we already are, but to be able to live it out and start seeing myself that only God's word is coming out of my mouth, Immediately the devil says, that's not possible. How can you do that? Then you cannot live your life. You just have to be in the Bible the rest of your life. And so the devil is always questioning the identity of Jesus Christ and the ability of Jesus Christ. He's always there. Anytime the word goes out, the Bible says he's always looking to steal it. He always wants it to take it away from us. So when we learn something new, when, when the truth comes into us, the devil's right there trying to steal it from us. And so which means that we might fail as soon as we learn something. So when somebody learns how to drive a bicycle, they're not perfect at it right away, right? They'll fall sometimes. A kid starts driving a bicycle and falls. I fell many times when I was a kid. But then I got really good and then I stopped falling. And so as we're learning this truth and walking it out, we're going to fail, and it's okay. So when a child falls on a bicycle, is that the end? Does the child say, that's it, I'm never going to drive this bicycle again? No, they get back up, and if they're having a hard time with that, then the parents or somebody around that child says, come on, you can do it. It's okay. We'll watch that, you know, whatever scrape you have, just get back on that bicycle and keep moving forward. So who are we surrounded in our life? And the most evil thing you can be is if you have a bad person around you and you fall on a bicycle and somebody say, well, what a loser. You'll never be able to drive that bicycle. Can you learn to drive a bicycle with somebody like that around in your life? No. So look around and who are the people in your life? What are people in your life telling you? Are they telling you you're a loser, you're never going to work out, you're never going to make it, you, it's impossible for you to be like Jesus? 
or you have people that are encouraging you and are telling you, get up, you can do it, keep moving forward. You'll overcome this. So analyze the people that are in your life and get rid of some of these people in your life. I had to do that. I got rid of a lot of people out of my life. Why would I want to be with people that are trying to tell me that I'm going to be like the devil? I don't want those people in my life. I want people in my life that are telling me constantly that I can be like Jesus. That's the people that I want to be surrounded with. Because this life is too short. And then we have eternity with God. And so our job is to figure this out as quick as possible, start walking it out, and destroy as many works of the devil as possible while we can. And then we get into heaven and... It, it gets way better. But it all starts here. Amen? So when we speak God's word, the same power is coming out. Why? Because it is no longer we that live, but him living through us. So if we see ourselves as him, and we see as him living through us, Whatever power is coming out of Jesus' mouth, whatever power is coming out of his hands, the same power, the same life, the same strength is coming out of our mouth, coming out of our hands. Only if we see ourselves that way. And so I remember when I just started praying for people, I would take him by the hands and I would be scared, like, is anything going to happen? Is anything going to happen? Thank God for God grace, things still happened. And I'd be like, I'd be more surprised than the person that got healed. <laughs> But God wanted me to move into it because I decided, I agreed that I'm going to start walking in this. And so, thank God for His grace. He's always there helping us. He's always there encouraging us. Even if people are not, He will always comfort us. That's what we have the Holy Spirit. He is our comforter. And He is the best comforter that we can have. And so, Jesus gave Him to us so we can walk out on this earth with Him always being comforted.